We are here on Nostalgia Pod. And if you're subscribed on youtube.com slash Nostalgia Pod, you would know this. Big fans of Kanye West. Big fans of the music of Kanye West. Let's qualify that. Ah. And uh, yeah, Kanye, uh, If you go, go check out our Kanye rankings, which came out recently. Uh, mm-hmm. we, we really did a deep dive if you want to hear all of our thoughts on that. Um, Kanye started Good Music, a label which has brought us many, many hours of music that we enjoy, I'd say. Right? Mm-hmm. You agree with that? Absolutely. Big Sean announced that he is no longer with Good Music this past week. And you asked me, is Good Music, the label, dead? Yeah. And I, I, I thought maybe this is a good discussion for the pod. So I want to flip it back to you. What was your just initial reaction to seeing Big Sean left? You know, on one hand, can't be too surprised, given everything else that's happened with Good Music, which we can get into. On the other hand, he was the longest running signee left after Kanye himself. Big Sean had been with good music since 2007. Obviously, uh, Big Sean getting his big break from Kanye is you know well told uh, story at this point. But to see Big Sean finally uh, move on, saying that he completed his deal and that uh, it's still a brotherhood, but he needed a, a bigger piece of the pie. Uh, to paraphrase, still, uh, you know, still, I think, noteworthy to see that happen. He also uh, announced this alongside a brief EP with Hit Boy, someone who had already uh, left good music some time ago. So I, I, I think it's just kind of the, the latest entry in this story that's been ongoing. But at this point now, without one of his longest running uh, signees in Big Sean, Kanye really doesn't have anybody with much of a track record left at the label, uh, apart from, of course, Pusha T. So it, it's it's been a downturn, no question. Yeah, uh, you know, you mentioned that there's been a lot that's gone on with the label. You know, it's it's funny because when you look at who's left here, um, it's it's really like a, a stars and scrubs type. Uh, cast and that and that, that's really not to say that we don't like some of these other uh mm-hmm. artists but you got kanye and pusha t obviously q-tip who uh has his own legendary career prior to good music uh and then it's i guess oh seven oh shake francis mm-hmm. and the lights valet and Sheck west that that's it that's, that's it. who's left in good music bro come on and kids see ghosts i guess but that's just a kanye and uh cutty right. vehicle i don't know if I really and there's that. some people that seem like they are still technically signed to the very good beats production arm uh of good music such as mike dean and charlie heat that's of course where hit boy had a uh, left from hudson mohawk had left from etc so it seems like there's more people that might still be signed but it's also hard to actually know a lot of times this stuff doesn't get publicized until the artists themselves kind of tell everyone um but yeah, I mean, this thing about, I think and the, the key thing with all of this is if you just look at some of the names that you did mention that are still there, 070 Shake and Vale come to mind. Sheck West as well. Someone who recently left, designer. All those people joined the label once Pusha T had taken over as the newest and still current president of the label. And I think that was, a, even though Kanye was never actually the president, that was supposed to be a, uh, passing of the torch in a sense that Kanye really didn't have the time to run the label and that if Pusha T was left more in charge. At least Stephen Victor is also involved as well in a different position. If someone other than Kanye was running the show from a leadership position, they could actually foster new talent and as well as find new talent, right? And a lot of those are good signings, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, Designer made plenty of sense after what Kanye did with Panda to help blow it up and, you know, with Father Stretch My Hands and all that, right? But what's been kind of clear is that the label isn't actually good at, like, furthering a career unless you're actually doing stuff with Kanye. It's really not that different from a lot of the stuff we've said about Drake and OVO, you know, The Weeknd and XO. It it just seems to be kind of the way it goes when you have this one singular force and I think the key difference with Kanye compared to these other labels is that Kanye still wants to be involved with music, right? And the last, the last probably last 
gasp of good music as a label was the Wyoming albums in 2018, right? Where Kanye was the EP for all of them. But let's not forget, Nas was involved in this, not a signee of the label. You know, Big Sean mm-hmm. was not there. Um, so I feel like that was kind of the last gasp. And then, you know, seeing what happened with Designer who left and he wasn't very happy with how that was, uh, how it was handled. He felt like he was kind of there to write for Kanye. He wrote a lot for Yandi, which didn't come out. But his own career was never really benefited by Good and Def Jam. And uh, Sheck West had a famous quote from like years ago at this point. I wish Kanye was more involved in my career. And you know what? I think I do, too, because Sheck West hasn't made a whole lot of noise since uh, Mo Bamba in that debut album. So it, I think it's just kind of, you know, it, it's run its course. You know, Cruel Summer is coming up on nine years old now, already nine years old. So uh, I think creatively, Kanye just doesn't have enough to give to other people. You know, he can barely give enough to himself these days, as we've seen with his album rollouts and uh, wait, inability to self-edit usually. So I think the label, the label, the label must must be dead. You know, like it, it, at least as an idea to invest in anyway, it's certainly dead. You know, it's interesting. So just uh, looking through Daytona and King Push, you know, Push T's latest albums, you don't see any of these good artists, good music artists on it at all. Um, you see Rick Ross <laughs> pop up, you see Kalani, but you know, none of this, none of this young talent is on there. So you mentioned how uh, these younger artists are looking and asking, where's Kanye? You know, like <laughs> I signed to this label. I was hoping to be getting some of that creative juice. Um, Push is not given it either. And so, uh, obviously, I think there's plenty of uh, finger pointing that could uh, go around here. You mentioned uh, 070 Shake, Valet. Um, I think Shaq West and Francis in the Lights. I really like all those artists. I think they all are talented in their own different way. Um, you know, it's it's funny because Francis in the Lights just like sticks out like such a sore thumb in that group to me. Um, I, I think just because he doesn't do any rapping. I guess 070 Shake isn't as much of a rapper, more of a singer as well. Right. But um just like a very like interesting part of it you know i also wonder for these artists and you know someone like um big sean tiana taylor these more established artists who are a little further along in their career i wonder if they're just kind of like fed up with a little bit of like the kanye exploits Mm -hmm. you know some of the songs he's put out um in recent (laughs) years have been uh, I think questionable, say the least, something like I love it with a little pump. Um, just like if you're one of these like younger artists and you see Kanye working with a little pump over you, diving on the label, it's got to be a little frustrating, right? It's gotta be yeah. a little bit like who's, who's really helping me out here. So I, I, I think there's plenty of finger pointing to go around. But, you know, I think overall, if good music is dead, which I mean, I think like we were pointing out, there's still some talented artists. What do you what do you see good legacies music as at this point? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, it, it's inescapable from Kanye. I couldn't help but think of all the other uh, labels that kind of also serve as like creative collectives that also happened in the last 10 years. You know, I mentioned OVO, which everyone knows how that's done nothing for anyone except for Drake. And EXO has barely made any noise apart from the weekend and like nav you know and like nav's found a career for himself but like exo's not much of a a force either right Maybach music group at one point was pretty much going head to head with good music at the beginning of the decade mmg has largely fizzled out as well even though ross and meek are still active artists it's kind of the same story honestly even pro era which I've invested in many people have invested in. We talked about this a few weeks ago with Kirk Knight's recent album that notice noticeably was not on pro era is pro era kind of fizzled out as well as far as like more independent, less mainstream creative labels go. Right. Other than like TDE, uh, TDE has the best track record in terms of multiple artists uh, putting out good work, but that even might be running its own course. Kendrick is leaving. Right. And he's mm-hmm. their biggest star. So I'd say good music probably has the second had the second best run as an overall label after TDE. Um, but it does have the the best and one of the few true label albums in Cruel Summer, which yeah. is undeniably important and had a lot of great songs. So 
that's that's what I latch on to is, is that. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, the cruel summer time was really great. And I really had a lot of like uh, nostalgia for that now, nostalgia for that. Uh. Um, and I remember when that random good music song Champions came out. Talk of the next one, cr- next label album, Cruel Winter. I was fucking hyped for that. Obviously, no chance that that was ever going to happen. It doesn't seem like they ever tried to make it happen either. So uh, it, it is what it is. But, you know, I, you can still look back on like what actually did come out and that there was some good stuff. But most of that is, you know, more than five years ago at this point. It's been a while. Almost a decade ago for some of it. Yeah. Um, kind of crazy to think about. Um, you know, I was, I was thinking the only group that feels, I think, a little bit exciting in the good music way right now and I, uh, i'm not as well versed in the various labels i think is um greenville actually kind of right now because yes. you know they've uh jid i think is a mm-hmm. rising star there ari lennox i like them i think that just earth that gang. yeah earth gang i think that's just a collective that um makes a lot of sense and has put out some some good collective records recently. yeah that's so. an oversight on my part for sure the dreamville album did get nominated for rap album of the year two grammys ago and that used to be a talking point with like cole stands where it's like no dreamville is the best dreamville is the best and it wasn't the case before but honestly it's probably the case now and maybe that'll continue to be the case and it's not that cole is necessarily any more of a foster of talent than kanye has been but the story about how they made that dreamville album where they actually really brought everyone together and just did tons of recording sessions kind of harkens back to the way Connie used to actually do things, you know? So mm-hmm. yeah, that's a good point. I think that that's probably the one because TDE also hasn't made a lot of noise with newer signings post Isaiah Rashad and SZA, you know, they got signed a while ago at this point. So yeah, yeah, I think, I think Dreamville's the one, you know, one other thing I was thinking about with Kanye, obviously good music's been around since 2004. He signed a lot of people. There's that first wave of people he signed. And then Big Sean really is the notable person that he signed after that. But Kanye's had falling out with people that he's worked with, you know, coming up on 20 years of that now. And a lot of times he's mended the bridge. Kid Cudi has been off good music for what, six years or whatever it is? It's been a Eight long years. time. 2013. Years. Right. Uh, Tony Williams has been off for ages. Both those guys are on Donda. They are cool with Kanye once again. Uh, yep. Sci High has had his ups and downs with Kanye. Seems to be back on good terms, you know. Uh, well, even Big that's Sean, another that's another part of it, right? Where Big Sean, he doesn't seem to have much ill will uh, towards no. the team, besides maybe some business things. But it's almost like the access to Kanye is not as valuable as it once was. When you're figuring how much more you're sacrificing from the business end in terms of like royalty cuts and stuff and masters. So it's not that there's anything against Kanye, but it's like it's almost like a cost benefit analysis. And that t- that that chance was more appealing back when Kanye was at a different point creatively. Right. Yeah, no, a- absolutely. Um, you know, you mentioned the ill will from Big Sean. Big Sean tweeted that, you know, good music will always be a brotherhood. But this was mostly just a he outgrew the contract, wanted to start his own label, right. um, make more money. And that's kind of what happens with these rappers. Probably was overdue for Big Sean, to be completely honest. But, yeah. you know, we if you want to hear our thoughts on Big Sean records, it might explain why he may be staying on the label, on the label longer. Um, but, yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense. And I'm sure we'll see Big Sean pop back up in some Kanye projects whenever those pop up themselves. So, right. um, you know, good music. Long live good music. 